Captain Brown's chicken? And I said, yeah. What did they tell him? And why did she keep silent for so long? In this hour, massacre at closing time. The temperature in the quiet Chicago suburb of Palatine, Illinois, had plunged below zero on January 8, 1993. But it wasn't the weather that made this night so terrible, so impossible to forget. I was sick to my stomach thinking about what are the possibilities that I'm about to find out, and it was awful. What happened inside this restaurant Brown's chicken and pasta was beyond anyone's imagination. The owners were Richard and Lynn Elenfeld, the parents of three girls, Jennifer, Dana, and Joy. I said, you know, listen, this is my mother in there that we're talking about. I need to know what happened to my mom. Their father was in there too, and Joy was not prepared for what she was about to hear. And he looked at me and he said, there's seven dead people in there. And he, got, he walked away and I just collapsed in the snow. Seven souls lost in one of the worst mass murders in Illinois history. Killed were the Elenfelds and five employees. There was the fry cook, a 47-year-old father of three named Guadalupe Maldonado, 32-year-old Thomas Menez, who handled the food prep, 31-year-old manager in training Marcus Nelson, also killed two young cashiers, 17-year-old Rico Solis, and his good friend, 16-year-old Michael Castro. Michael's father had waited desperately all night in the Browns parking lot for word of his son. Our son is there, that's all I know. Your son is in bed? Yeah, he's working there. The families couldn't fathom the terrible possibilities. To this day, it's hard to imagine. We've tried to recreate through computer technology the scene inside Browns that night. Walking through this set, it's hard to imagine the enormity of the crime. At the time, detectives had no idea the biggest case they'd ever faced would hinge on one clue hidden somewhere in the restaurant that night. But for the three Elenfeld girls, this story is not a murder mystery. It's a story of survival. A search for justice for their parents and all of the victims, and a search for peace for themselves. Their parents' career plans had never included running a fried chicken joint. Early on, Richard and Lynn Elenfeld were idealists, volunteering at church and running a halfway house for ex-cons. But at the center of their lives, their girls, who still talk about how mom slipped notes in their lunch boxes or rang a cowbell at soccer games. My mom is high-fiving me in high school, and I was just mortified, you know. And I look back now, and I'm like, that's so sweet, and that's so... I, I love the fact that she would do that. Dad's passion was politics. He worked for Senator George McGovern, campaigned for Senator Ted Kennedy, and served as an advance man for President Jimmy Carter. But with three girls to put through college, he eventually took a job in public relations for a cable television company. He was an extremely talented man at whatever he did. Then, just as the college bills loomed, their father faced a midlife career crisis, laid off at age 48. He was really stressed about that. Brown's chicken here in Cozy Palatine seemed like a good investment, so the Elenfeld sank most of their retirement fund into a franchise. How much of their lives did they put into this restaurant? A hundred percent. Sixteen-hour days, seven days a week. But just seven months into their venture, the Elenfeld started to see some success. And then, on that horrific night, everything was lost. 23-year-old Jennifer was finishing her first week as a legislative assistant in Wisconsin. 18-year-old Joy was home, packing up for her first semester at college. And 20-year-old Dana was filling in at the restaurant during her Christmas break from college. She had left work early to have dinner with her boyfriend. It's sort of a blur. I mean, I remember leaving. I remember punching out, you know, and see you later. Dana came home late that night and discovered her parents weren't there. It was 2.30 in the morning. They were late sometimes, but it was never, it was never that late. She called her parents at work. No one answered. So while Joy started making calls to various police departments, Dana and her grandmother drove to the restaurant. They found a parking lot swarming with police and wrapped in crime tape. 
an ambulance parked nearby. My grandmother is very upset, and I remember telling her it's going to be okay because when it's very serious, it's called a load and go, and they just pick up, you know, who's ever hurt, and they get them to the hospital. But since they're not doing that, they're stabilizing them, and everything is okay. We just have to wait. But it wasn't okay, and all they could do was listen as the grim details emerged. This is the way the restaurant was laid out. One of the freezers was located here. Inside, five bodies crowded together, each shot in the head. That's where the Elenfeld's mother was found. Her throat had been cut. Their father, Richard, was killed in a second freezer along with another employee. In all, more than 20 shots were fired. The killer or killers had apparently tried to get rid of evidence because no shell casings were found and a mop had been used to clean the floor. But at least one spot was missed. A print from a size 12 and a half to 14 Nike shoe was left behind. And there were a few other clues. More than $1,800 was taken from the safe, but a small amount of money was left on a bottom shelf. The last receipt showed a meal purchased at 9.08, eight minutes after closing. The clock on the wall stopped at 9.48 when someone turned off the power to the restaurant. And the trash cans were all empty, except for one. The remains of a partially eaten chicken dinner had been tossed inside. The random clues to a slaughter that left seven innocent people dead and pointed to no one. So who might have done this? and why. Coming up, an early tip singles out a suspect. I like to do target practice in the basement of a house. Your parents' house? Yes. Mr. Evans, this is Janice from OnStar. I received an automatic signal you've been in a front-end crash. Do you need help? Yeah. I'll contact emergency services and stay with you. You okay? <sighs> yeah. OnStar. Standard for one year on 11 Chevy models. Hey, our salads. Do that all you want. I don't like V8 juice. How about V8 V Fusion? A full serving of vegetables, a full serving of fruit. But what you taste is the fruit. So even you could have had a V8. Buy Factory Direct. Half carat journey pendant. Circles and bracelets are $199. One carat top white studs and three stone rings, $699. Two carats, $1990. Plus no interest for six months. Buy Direct, the jewelry exchange nationwide and online. Fidelity is America's number one IRA choice. It's because we give you free investment help. We don't charge IRA account fees. And we have more four and five star funds than any other company, all with no loads. Get your Fidelity IRA today. Come in or call 1-800-FIDELITY. Is Credit Tiger and Phil are back. The top two players in the world are making their 2008 season debuts on the Golf Channel. Can Tiger continue his winning ways by four beating at Torrey Pines? Or will it be Lefty driving off in a 2008 Buick? Get ready for another classic Phil versus Tiger showdown on the Golf Channel. Watch Tiger and Phil make their season debuts at the Buick Invitational Thursday and Friday at 3 and 9 p.m. Eastern on the Golf Channel. I love Alpacas because it allows my wife and I to have a family business together. We also involve our three small children in the business. I used to be involved in real estate and for the last eight years my family and I have been raising alpacas and we found it to be a lot more enjoyable and a lot less stressful. We go to many alpaca shows and we meet different people from different walks of life and we found that to, to be very enriching and very enjoyable. 
To get the full story, visit an alpaca farm or ranch. To locate one near you, go to ilovealpacas.com. In the early morning hours of January 9th, 1993, a massacre at the Brown's Chicken and Pasta Restaurant in Palatine, Illinois, brought a swarm of police, cameras, and reporters to the scene. Owners Lynn and Richard Elenfeld, the parents of three young women, were among the dead. And one day you've lost your mom and dad, and you were thrust into one of the biggest investigations in state history and, and certainly the biggest news story. It was overwhelming. The autopsy revealed Lynn Elenfeld was singled out for some reason, her body showing wounds from bullets and a blade. With my mom, I remember reading about um, the cut on her neck, and I remember I, I was reading it and I was just crying. And, and the police officer said to me, but you know, that's not what killed her. And I just sort of said, but it hurt. In the first frantic hours after the murders, the small town Palatine police were inundated with leads that went mostly nowhere. There is a killer still on the loose. The businesses ought to take extra precautions. The police department is taking extra precautions. Then suddenly, just 24 hours after the killings, one particular tip sent police rushing for the door. It looks like a big one and it looks like a good one. Maurice Posley is a reporter for the Chicago Tribune and author of The Brown's Chicken Massacre. They get a tip that a former employee of the restaurant had a gun, was recently practicing with the gun. It was a disgruntled employee. Um, so they focused in on this fellow, Martin Blake. Law enforcement disguised as utility workers set themselves up outside Martin Blake's home. And the moment he walked out the door, uh, he was converged upon and uh, taken into custody. I was infamous, right? Back in 1993, Blake's arrest sent a collective sigh of relief through the suburbs of Chicago. Despite his boy next door looks, he was described as a young man with a grudge and a gun. I like to do target practice in the basement of a house. Your parents' house? Yes. Firing away in the basement? Yes, and my mother had some uh, awards that she won from some beauty pageant contest, and it was fun to shoot the heads off of the um, icons there. Just a week before the murders, Richard Elenfeld had fired Blake for leaving the restaurant early. So you had been angry at Mr. Elenfeld? Yes. And remember, more than $1,800 have been taken from the safe. Did you know where the safe was? Oh, yes, it was, it was in plain view. But it soon became clear there were problems with the police theory. Blake had the wrong caliber gun. He passed a lie detector test, and he had an alibi. Several people remembered being with him that night. Did you have anything to do with the mass murder at that restaurant that night? Absolutely not. In the end, Blake was released. No strings attached. But his arrest would come back to haunt the police. Were the police so focused on Martin Blake in those initial days that they excluded looking at other suspects? I believe that they did not look at any other suspects because I think they believed they had the right guy. I mean, they would be criticized severely for this um, later on. The Palatine police had never encountered a case this big or complex. So just a day or so after Blake's release, the police chief called in outside help, forming a task force that included scores of law enforcement veterans. There were 130 of this area's best investigators out there. Uh, people from uh, the FBI had come in from Washington and Quantico. Uh, plus the state police were there, the county was there. Chicago Homicide Sergeant Paul Carroll was working 16-hour days. What kind of pressure do you feel to solve it? I mean, you want to solve it for the family, you want to solve it for the people uh, that you're protecting, but it, it's a professional thing. Uh, it's our pride on the line. How can somebody do this? But days turned into weeks, then months, and each time the police hauled in a suspect for questioning, the media frenzy would begin again. Lead 80, lead 979, lead 1,579. 
all of them dead ends. After several years, media attention would move away from the crime and onto the failure to solve it. This is not the way you run an independent, objective, full-time, serious police department. In December 1997, nearly five years after the killings, a watchdog agency called the Better Government Association investigated the investigation. The report was brutal. Well, let me read some of the conclusions that you're familiar with. Police ignored reports of family members the first night, failed to canvass the neighborhood in a timely manner, contaminated the crime scene, inept coordination among the task force. You see, and I don't think any of those things are true. First off, the area where this happened is a commercial area uh, that closes up at 9 o'clock. And the stores were canvassed. And how are you as an investigator beginning to feel when you're reading this kind of thing in the newspaper? personally attacked. I felt like I better put a bulletproof vest on. The Elenfeld daughters had always supported the police, but Dana did wonder about that report. You know, part of me knew it wasn't true, but part of me was saying, well, you know, what if it is? That said, the Elenfelds gradually began to move on with their lives. All three sisters would marry in weddings that were bittersweet. I think all three of us kind of paused for a second at the end of the aisle and just, you know. Took a deep breath. Yeah. Hi, John. This is Representative Jennifer Schilling. Just Jennifer, a legislative aide, went on to become a state representative in Wisconsin. Dana had three children. How mom would have loved that. As much as it hurts me to know that they don't know their grandkids, it hurts me more to know that my children don't know them. After all this time, police seemed to be left with little more than they had the night of the murders. A clock stopped at 9.48, money taken from the safe. A print from a Nike shoe size 12 and a half to 14. A receipt for a meal at 9.08, and the remains of a chicken dinner tossed in the trash. And for the family, the roller coaster had slowed down. I wasn't necessarily losing hope, but it, I, wa I wasn't clinging to it either. I wasn't hanging my life on the fact that this case was going to get solved. Finally, on April 28, 2001, the wrecking ball finished off the building that had housed Brown's Chicken and all its terrible memories. The space became a parking lot, a place to sell Christmas trees. Life was indeed moving on, but this cold case would soon heat up. Coming up, a phone call in 2002 would change everything. Someone with a secret was about to tell all. Rushing around, working hard, See you tomorrow. taking care of our kids, Wake up, Mom. finding time for friends. All this makes us feel run down. Did you know that a hectic life can weaken your body's defenses? Well, you can help strengthen them with Dan Active. Only Dan Active has LKCI Immunitas and is clinically proven to help strengthen your body's defenses. Dan Active. Help strengthen your body's defenses. 25 studies have shown the effectiveness of Dan Active and LKCI Immunitas. Why has it been called the greatest car on earth? Is it because it is the choice of so many world leaders? Is it because of its extraordinary reputation for safety? Or its storied and celebrated history? Or is it simply because once a person has experienced it, they find it difficult to settle for anything less? The 2008 S-Class, the legendary sedan from Mercedes-Benz. Here's good news for small business owners. Now there's a better way to do payroll. It's PayCycle, the easy, affordable online solution. Just enter employee hours, then print out checks or use free direct deposit. You can pay federal and most state taxes with one click. It even fills out 941s and W-2s. Introductory prices start at just $9.99 a month. But you can try PayCycle free for 30 days. 
Log on to PayrollOnTV.com. That's PayrollOnTV.com. Do it now. With all the hundreds of credit card offers you get in the mail, how do you find the one that's best for you? It's easy at CreditCards.com. In just minutes, you can get the best rate, the most cash back, the best mileage rewards. It's all here. At CreditCards.com, finding a better card is quick and simple. Just select, compare, and apply. It's secure, easy, and free. So get the card you want and the credit you deserve at CreditCards.com today. Tomorrow, the South Carolina primary. Crucial. So far, Clinton and Obama have been slinging dirt. And Keith asks, will they now take the high road or continue to be stuck in the mud? The latest, number 4,842, came from a woman with a troubling secret. She told police that back in 1993, her boyfriend and a friend of his had bragged to her about the killings. After years of false leads, police thought she might be a jilted girlfriend trying to get her boyfriend into trouble. But she provides a fact that gives her credibility beyond all these other sort of bogus stories that have come in over the years and the fact is that one of the victims had vomited french fries during the killing a sad detail never mentioned in any of the reports released by police convinced they finally had the right guys the police started looking for physical evidence to tie the men to the murder scene the killers had taken some time to clean up after themselves picking up shell casings wiping away fingerprints even mopping up the bloody aftermath never guessing they had left behind a clue remember those chicken bones recovered from the trash well that meal had been stored in a freezer for nine years and during that time forensic science had improved dramatically now police wondered if they could take an extracted piece of dna from those old bones and match it to a suspect this was the most remarkable I think, piece of police work, save that meal because this could very well be the meal of the killers. And police say it was. Lab tests matched the DNA on the chicken to one of the men named in lead 4,842. Puts him at the scene, probably after the place is closed, on the night this happens. With a witness and a DNA match, police arrested the two men and charged them with seven counts of murder. It was May 2002. One of the suspects was Juan Luna, a husband and father, a quiet family man who installed kitchen appliances for a living. You look into Juan Luna's past, and is there anything in his past that would suggest he's capable of something like this? Nothing other than probably some big talk and the fact that he worked there before. And no history of violence? No. His only known crime was bouncing a $100 check. Just 18 at the time of the killings, he had worked for the Elenfelds for a short time. You feel betrayed that it was someone who had, was familiar, who had met my parents. By 2002, Luna's alleged accomplice in the killings was an unmarried handyman with a checkered past named James Degorski. At the time of the killings, he was just 20. And you look at Jim Degorski, and what do you find about him? Probably the same thing. Uh, while there may have been a little, a little rough around the edges, it's certainly not the type of a person that you'd expect to do this. When confronted with the DNA evidence, police say Juan Luna gave a full confession detailing a carefully planned mass murder. A murder that police say was not for money or revenge. Police say Luna and Degorski did it for the thrill. According to investigators, Luna told a witness he really wanted to kill someone, and Degorski agreed to help. So on that night in January 1993, they approached the restaurant from the back and wedged a piece of wood behind the back door, 
so employees couldn't escape. Then, right at closing time, they entered from the front. Luna ordered a four-piece chicken dinner. Degorski worried Luna's greasy fingers would leave behind prints, so they put on gloves. And with their pockets packed with bullets, one of them pulled out a 38 caliber handgun. An employee tried to escape, but the wedge door wouldn't budge. At one point, police say Luna grabbed Lynn Elenfeld by the neck, swore at her, and slit her throat. Then the victims were rounded up. They were basically forced into these coolers, and the gun was shot and reloaded and shot again and reloaded and shot again and reloaded and shot again. It turns out Luna's name was in the police file all along. Just after the murders, he'd been questioned along with the other former employees. He uh, had an alibi, and he brought his alibi with him. His alibi, another young woman, a friend who had told police she was with Luna that night. He went in, and like all the people that were brought in, they were asked, where were you on this night, and can you explain your whereabouts? And he said he was with her. And police had no idea how close they were. No, not, no, not a whip. But Ann Lockett knew. She is the witness, Degorski's former girlfriend, who finally came forward after more than nine years. She has never given an interview. Coming up, her story. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Your cat will always be reminded of how much you love her because you fulfill her desires with Fancy Feast Gourmet Gold Dry Food for Cats. Delight her with filet mignon flavor with real seafood and shrimp. Dream a little dream of me. Is it love or is it Fancy Feast? You know, I'm really glad we finally decided to see where Raisin Bran Crunch is made. Uh, this trip is way overdue. I just can't wait to see all those crunchy flakes in action. I hope I get a chance to put two scoops of raisins in some boxes. You know what'll really get us in the spirit? 99 boxes of Raisin Bran Crunch. If you're nice to me, I'll share some with you. You take one down. We'll pass it around! 98 boxes of Raisin, raisin Bran Crunch. Raisins, flakes, and honey oak clusters. They're quite a trio. Raisin, raisin Bran Crunch! From Kellogg. Before taking any loan, you should know the terms. CFSA member companies always follow state regulations to make payday advance terms clear. Now we're doing even more. All stores will display easy-to-read posters that show advance amount, fee, and APR. Fees differ by company and state. Look for the posters or go to knowyourfee.org before you take out a payday advance. Making the fine print bigger, that's responsible lending. Always use payday advances responsibly. Howie Mandel here in just a general shopping area. Here's people doing it all wrong. I'm going to tell you a better way to do this. Who are you talking to? My fiancé. If you were going to yeah. buy him something, what would you buy him? A TV. You're doing it all wrong. This is not the way to shop. I want you to go home, and I need you to reshop the right way. The way to do it is buy.com. You have all sorts of gifts from electronics to video games to books. You can compare prices, and you can have free shipping. Better than Amazon, right? Buy.com. Better prices than Best Buy. Right, right. You're getting a TV for a better price. Very excited. Hello? Honey. <laughs> Buy.com. Attention, all Medicare. Have an old 401k. It's not enough to just leave it alone. It takes care and attention from year to year. Open a T. Rowe Price Smart Choice Rollover IRA, and we'll do the work for you. Just choose a T. Rowe Price retirement fund closest to your expected retirement date. Our fund managers adjust the investment mix over time to become more conservative as your retirement date nears. All with no loads, sales charges, or commissions. Visit our website or call our investment guidance specialists at 1-800-953-3418 and consider the move that could make a difference in your retirement. The T. Rowe Price Smart Choice Rollover, 1-800-953-3418. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. The more you ask, the more we're different. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. I'm Melissa Rayberger. Here's what's happening. Actor Heath Ledger was found dead in his New York City apartment today. Sources say he was face down in bed with several prescription medications nearby. Police say there was...
Ann Lockett has spent half her life dogged by regret and guilt and fear. In 1993, just a day after seven people were killed at a Brown's Chicken restaurant in Palatine, Illinois, she says the killers told her what they did and how they did it. It took her nine years to find the courage to call the police. How many times have you said to yourself, I wish I could turn that clock back to January 7th, 1993 well sometimes I think that if I would have known I could have stopped it Ann Lockett says she tried to drown her guilt in alcohol and drugs but she could never make it go away and when you think about this crime what do you think about I think about the victims and their families about how they never knew what happened for so long and the fact that both defendants were out there living their happy lives and they shouldn't have been and you knew it and I knew it this is the first time Ann Lockett has given an interview about the case do you want to talk about it now yes why I believe that people need to know and these two men need to be exposed for the people they are this is her account of what she says she was told by her then boyfriend James Degorski and his high school buddy Juan Luna. Both men deny any role in the massacre. But Ann Lockett says that's not what they told her just after the murders in January 1993. At the time, she was 17 and wrestling with her own demons. So you're in a hospital on January 8th of 1993, mm -hmm. recovering from a suicide attempt. She says on January 9th, she received a phone call at the hospital. Who's on the other end? Jim. Jim Degorski. Mm -hmm. He told me that he had done something big and to watch the news. It was more than a murder in a fast food restaurant. It was seven murders. And what do you say? I saw the lead story of the murders at Brown's Chicken. But police will say only it is a complex case. After Lockett was released from the hospital a couple of days later, she went to Degorski's house and found Juan Luna there as well. Luna, she says, was eager to talk. They asked me if I wanted to know what had happened at Brown's Chicken, and I said yes. Lockett says she heard a story that haunts her to this day. Juan described how he cut a woman's throat. I remember that distinctly because he, he demonstrated what he did. He said something to effect of, uh, um, I grabbed her like this, called her a bitch, and slit her throat. And he's talking about Mrs. Elenfeld? Yes. Lockett says Degorski masterminded the killings, but Luna provided the inspiration. I remember Jim saying something like, Juan wanted to know what it was like to ice somebody. And Jim had the, the street smarts of knowing how to pull off a crime. Lockett says the attack was well thought out. They had told me that they parked Juan's car somewhere behind a strip mall or some apartments. And it was snowing. So they walked funny, you know, so no one could track their gait, I guess. and. They put a wedge behind the door before they went into the restaurant. Why? So if someone tried to flee out the back, they couldn't. Lockett says they entered the restaurant at closing time. Juan ordered some chicken and ate part of it. Then I recall them saying they went to the bathroom to put on some gloves. And then I just remember them telling me about the shooting. What did they say? I remember them saying that one man did try and flee out the back door, which didn't work. So he came and he ran through the restaurant and tried to jump over the counter. And he was shot. By whom? I think Jim shot him. I don't remember who shot all the specific people. But I remember they were put both in the freezer and the cooler. Some shot in there, some shot outside. Particularly striking, says Lockett, was Luna's demeanor as he described the killings. It seemed like he was excited to tell the story, not just to get it off his chest, but just to 
show how it was done. Any remorse of any kind? No. What's Jim Degorski doing? He was sitting on his bed. Um, he was telling part of the story too. But no, he, he didn't like stand up and demonstrate anything or become animated. What kind of girl would just sit there listening? Ann Lockett describes herself back then as someone desperate to fit in, somewhere, anywhere, making one bad decision after another and finding escape in alcohol and drugs. Drinking, pot, acid, basically whatever I could get my hands on at the time. You and Jim? Yeah. And even before the killings, Ann says Degorski was someone to fear. He would punch me, uh, not in the face, because he knew better, because other people could see it, on the chest and the legs. Uh, he would pull my hair. He'd spit on me. Lockett's relationship with Degorski and Luna would ultimately put her own credibility in doubt. What was she doing with these guys anyway? What attracted you to Jim Degorski? The way my mind was working at the time, if somebody liked me, then I should take that, that chance. I know it sounds kind of backwards to a lot of people, but not very many people liked me. So there she was, 17, fresh out of the hospital, and hearing a story too terrible to believe, but she felt it was true. But now you're a witness. Right. You know something that only a few people know. That's why Jim told me that if I ever told anybody that he would kill me. And that was enough to put me in fear for as long as it did. Nine years passed before Ann Lockett would summon the courage to come forward. Coming up. What's going through your mind as you're finally telling this story to law enforcement? Is paying booking fees on his flight? I'm on it. Let's go, Nofi. So, I see you're paying booking fees on that flight. Yeah, it's no big deal. What are you doing? It's no big deal, right? Nofi doesn't like it when people pay booking fees. Makes him angry. Hey, okay, I'm gonna go to Priceline. Hey, no booking fees. Don't you love to negotiate? Introducing no booking fees on flights at Priceline. Why has it been called the greatest car on earth? Is it because it is the choice of so many world leaders? Is it because of its extraordinary reputation for safety? Or its storied and celebrated history? Or is it simply because once a person has experienced it, they find it difficult to settle for anything less? The 2008 S-Class, the legendary sedan from Mercedes-Benz. When you suffer from restless leg syndrome, your legs don't want to stop. Even when you do. Annoying sensations can keep you up at night when all you want to do is get some rest. Fortunately, there's Mirapex. Mirapex is a prescription medicine that helps relieve the frequency and severity of many RLS symptoms. Call 1-888-210-5007 for a free RLS guide with information on Mirapex and a money-saving offer. Prescription Mirapex may cause you to feel drowsy or fall asleep during normal activities such as driving, or to feel faint or dizzy when you stand up. Tell your doctor if you experience these problems. If you drink alcohol or taking medicines that make you drowsy, or if you experience increased gambling, sexual, or other intense urges, other side effects include nausea. Call 1-888-210-5007 today to get your free guide and talk to your doctor about Mirapex and RLS. Because when your legs feel better, you feel better. Hey, man, it's your turn to get in the game. If I can lose weight, so can you. It was easy. The weight started falling off, and I started feeling great about myself. Losing never felt so good. It's time for you to lose weight, too. Order Nutrisystem Advanced, and we'll ship you four weeks of delicious meals. Plus, get free membership, free counseling, and free shipping. But wait, call 888-554-0070 to find out how you can get 70 extra meals absolutely free. It's not just about imagining your future. It's about knowing you'll get there. HSBC Direct Online Savings gives you 4.25% APY, nine times the national savings average. And unlike CDs, you can withdraw cash anytime. Go to hsbcdirect.com and stay in control of your money while making more of it.
They were someone's parent, child, friend. All seven gunned down in a 1993 restaurant massacre in Palatine, Illinois. Who did it? According to Ann Lockett, it was her boyfriend, Jim Degorski, and his friend, Juan Luna, who allegedly bragged about it just a day or so later. The teenage Lockett left Degorski in August 1994, more than a year after the killings. Still, she kept her secret. And I think that's really hard for people to understand. I can understand that. I, I, was, I was scared. What if they would come and try and kill me? And what if they didn't get convicted? These were all things that would run through my mind. And then I would probably go drink. She eventually got help for her drinking and drug use. She moved around, went to college, got a job working with the disabled. Years passed. Then, nearly nine years after the killings, the phone rang again. Degorski calls your mother looking for you. Mm -hmm. What goes through your mind? Incident fear. But despite that fear, she says she was a different person then, and she was ready to talk to the police. Well, I knew that I was, I was basically in a comfortable place in my life, and I, the guilt that I knew who killed these people was getting really bad. Lockett called a friend and told her everything. The friend put Lockett in touch with someone at the Palatine Police Department. What's going through your mind as you're finally telling this story to law enforcement? A lot of relief, a lot of uh, fear that he won't believe me. You had a fact that no one knew other than the police. It was that one of the victims vomited french fries. But police wanted more evidence on Degorski, so they asked Lockett to do something that terrified her. They want me to basically get a confession, do a wiretap. So you, you called Degorski on the phone? Right. Who's in the room? It was myself, the, the tape recording person, and Sergeant Bill King. Basically, I told him, listen, the Palatine police have contacted me. Um, they want me to go talk to them. You know, I never wanted to get involved with this. Stuff like that. Did he fight back or back down? He didn't fight back. Whenever I asked him a specific question, like, um, but these are seven people that you killed. He would just say something like, I just want you to be happy. So he would never deny it. But he didn't admit it either. Do you think he knew the tape was rolling? You know, I, I don't think so, but he was always skeptical about talking about anything on a phone. Police also tracked down Eileen Bacala, the woman who had confirmed Luna's alibi just after the murders. Now she backed Ann Lockett's story, witness number two. And there was that other damning piece of evidence the last chicken meal found in the trash at the crime scene in 1993. As forensic science improved over the years, police were able to match DNA on the chicken to Luna. He and Degorski were arrested in May of 2002. To the people now charged, you wanted to do something big. I hope you are placed in a cage that you have built through the, your own inhumanity toward the innocent. I am confident you will receive the death sentence you so justly deserve. Five years of delays and pretrial motions would follow, with both defendants remaining in custody. Juan Luna, first up for trial, would not go to court until April 2007. Prosecutors say Juan Luna confessed, left DNA evidence at the scene, and was implicated by devastating testimony from two key witnesses. So was this case a slam dunk for the prosecution? Not even close, according to the defense. Luna's defense team included lead attorney James Birch and Stephen Richards, who told the jury the problems with the prosecution's case began with the investigation. I think any fair-minded person would have to agree that the Palatine police in the early 90s was just not up to investigating the case properly. Richards said the crime scene was spoiled, the DNA compromised. It was a mixed sample of DNA. It came from two people, possibly three people. 
There is no indication how long it was there. There is a great deal of controversy in our minds over where it came from because of the way the evidence was collected. And the star witness? The defense said she was unreliable, to say the least. Ann Lockett was extremely unstable. She had drug problems, she had other problems, she had a mental health history. What's more, said Richards, the defense had a 1999 tape confession from another man named Jonathan Simonick, who told police he and a second man committed the murders. Well, we certainly had a videotape statement and other statements from John Simonick which matched the crime scene in ways that Juan Luna's statements did not. John Simonek knew things by the statements that only the actual killer would know. But what about Juan Luna's confession? Remember, he gave a 43-minute statement to police in 2002. Juan Luna was arrested with his five-year-old son, Brian, as he stopped for gas. Uh, he was separated from his son. He was forcibly arrested and interrogated by um, two police officers. We all think, well, I would never confess to something I didn't do. But put either of us in a police station, separated from our family, with officers who can promise us anything, who can lie to us, whose activities are not being recorded, and you'd be amazed at what people will say. And the case against Luna may have had another problem. The motive. All Reporter Charlie Wojciechowski of Station WMAQ covered the case from the beginning. He was there at Luna's trial. I think the motive is the weakest thing for the prosecution. Why would two people do this? If it's a robbery, you go in, you take the money, and you leave. Why would you kill the entire population of the restaurant in the fashion they were killed? And Juan Luna had no criminal history of violence. And was well regarded in school. They described him as very compliant with his teachers, uh, not a great student, but one that everyone seemed to get along with. So according to the defense, the crime scene was corrupted, the DNA mishandled, another guy confessed, and the star witness with her tortured past had a credibility problem. Coming up, what would the jury say? How important a witness was Ann Lockett? She was kind of messed up on drugs. And you, person on drugs, you really can't trust them sometimes, where they're coming from. Are you like me? I have high blood pressure, and I have high cholesterol. Sometimes problems come in twos, but sometimes help can come in one, Cataway. Cataway contains two proven medicines, Norbask for high blood pressure and Lipitor for high cholesterol, combined in one pill, Cataway. Cataway is one of many treatment options that I discuss with my doctor. Ask your doctor if Cataway is right for you. Along with diet and exercise, one pill doing two jobs for me. My doctor said Cataway is not for everyone. It's not for people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. To check for liver problems, you need simple blood tests. Tell your doctor about any heart problems and all other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. For blood pressure and cholesterol-lowering benefits, it's Cataway. One pill, two medicines. Makes sense to you? Makes sense to me. One pill, two medicines. Ask your doctor if Cataway is right for you. Fidelity is America's number one IRA choice. It's because we give you free investment help. We don't charge IRA account fees. And we have more four and five star funds than any other company, all with no loads. Get your Fidelity IRA today. Come in or call 1-800-FIDELITY. I'm Mark Goldston, Chairman and CEO of Net Zero. Look, we all know that every internet provider takes you to the same internet, so why pay more to get there? At Net Zero, we give you internet access at a great price, starting at $9.95 a month. You'll get features like pop-up locker, virus protection, and the fastest surfing over dial-up. And Net Zero is risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. All this for just $9.95 a month. Call 1-800-NET-ZERO or visit netzero.com. Attention drivers statewide. If you are insured with Allstate, GEICO, State Farm, or any other car insurer, you may be overpaying by hundreds of dollars. Find out how to get immediate savings through AIGdirect.com. 
what would it take to get you to switch your car insurance? If we told you that you could save $364 a year, wouldn't you pick up the phone? Start dialing, because you could save that much. People who switched from GEICO saved around $370. From Allstate, $430. Your savings could be higher, like this driver who switched, or this one. And no other company gives you AIG security advantage that includes roadside assistance at no additional cost. Immediate savings available through AIGdirect.com. Call for a free rate quote today. Call 1-800-850-2642 for a free rate quote. You could save hundreds of dollars. That number again is 1-800-850-2642. Call now or visit AIGdirect.com. If the trial of Juan Luna was preceded by 14 years of doubt and unanswered questions, it began with a searing singular image that left no doubt about what happened in the Brown's Chicken Massacre, where seven people were killed in 1993. Tell me about the videotape. It really caught us by surprise. The exteriors of the building, you see the tables, you see the cash registers, and then all of a sudden the camera swings to show the refrigerator and the freezer. And inside you see the bodies stacked up. And there was an audible gasp that came from the courtroom. State's attorney Dick Devine led the prosecution. In a way, videotape kind of takes it into a different realm. Uh, and sometimes it's unworldly and it takes away from the, uh, the reality and the brutality of an event, but not in this case. I believe seeing the foot, one of the victim's feet, hanging outside of the cooler, that is the hardest thing for me to look at. Steve Cook and John Polishek were on the Luna jury. They saw the video and the reactions of the victim's family in the courtroom. And what responsibility do you feel to the families of the victims? I believe my first responsibility is to the defendant, to give him a fair trial. Over the course of the five-week trial, the jury would hear from dozens of witnesses and consider nearly 250 pieces of evidence. Number one, uh, the, uh, the DNA was very critical. Uh, number two, the statements of uh, uh, the girlfriends that finally came forward. And then, of course, the videotape statement of the defendant himself. Remember, Luna gave a detailed 43-minute confession. The defense argues that that confession was coerced. Do you buy the argument? No, I didn't buy the argument. My impression was, like, listening to Juan Luna, it seemed like he was letting everything off his chest. It was like a relief for him. But what about that other videotape confession from Jonathan Simonek? The jurors said Simonek's confession didn't seem consistent or convincing. Prosecutor Dick Devine said the police dismissed Simonek's story years ago for good reason. They just found him totally uh, uncredible because his story kept changing and many of the things he said just didn't make any sense at all. When it came time for Ann Lockett's testimony, she was brought by police van under heavy guard. These two jurors had their doubts about her character, but they were struck by the fact she knew one victim had vomited french fries. Remember, a detail detectives had never released. So what does that do for Ann Lockett's credibility with you? It had raised it a lot more. The jury got the case on May 9th, 2007. You're ready to reach a verdict? Myself, yes. But not everyone was? Correct. About four hours after deliberations began, it became clear there was a holdup, a woman with serious doubts. I wish that she had allowed us into her head so that we could discuss it and deliberate as we were, are supposed to do as a jury. Um, but if the only way for her to come to that conclusion was to study all the evidence by herself. There was a time where we, no one spoke for like two hours. And the holdout is going through the evidence. Correct. Finally, after more than eight hours, the jurors took a vote, then returned to the courtroom. What's the verdict? Guilty. When it was read in court, you did hear an audible gasp from the families who felt a sense of relief. You also heard cries come out from Juan Luna's family. The victims' families, led by the Elenfeld's daughter Jennifer, had waited 14 years for this day. 
we as families can finally exhale from this long and emotional nightmare. After a painful, tearful sentencing phase, the jury gave Juan Luna life without parole. Again, Jennifer spoke for the families. We are exhausted and emotionally spent and now want to simply return to the daily routine of our family and work responsibilities. As Juan Luna's attorneys hammer out his appeal, his alleged accomplice in the Palatine massacre gets ready for his day in court. But when James Degorski goes on trial, the prosecution will have a different case, a tougher case to prove. They don't have the physical evidence. In that restaurant, it was Juan Luna who ordered the chicken and ate the chicken and threw the chicken away. There is also not the incriminating confession that Juan Luna gave on videotape. Uh, they don't have the two most powerful pieces of evidence that convicted Juan Luna. The judge in the Degorski trial has issued a gag order. We weren't able to speak with Degorski or his attorneys. But police and prosecutors say he admitted having a role in the murders during a four-minute interview taped after his arrest. The judges ruled that Degorski was not read his Miranda rights at the proper time. So jurors probably won't see the tape. The prosecution is appealing the order. So at this point, there's no confession, no DNA on Degorski. Do you think the prosecution can get a conviction without those two pieces of evidence? I think it's very possible for a couple of reasons. First of all, you've got people like Ann Lockett who have testified about their relationships with these two. Ann Lockett hasn't laid eyes on James Degorski in more than a decade. She'll see him again when he goes to trial sometime this year. What's your biggest concern about this case now? Like getting through Jim's trial. I hope everything goes how it should. And he's convicted. Um, there's a part of me that's just fearful that something will happen and he'll get away. He'll escape. Mm -hmm. Escape and do what? come find me the victims families know that if it weren't for Ann Lockett Juan Luna and James Degorski probably would still be free men still when she came forward in 2002 many were angry one of the Elenfeld daughters Joyce said it's repulsive to me it's unconscionable to me not to have come forward nine years ago I don't know how you can just know something this grave and not come forward to try to help I can understand how she would feel that way. It was very personal to her. Ann Lockett is now a married mother with a college degree, a long way from that sick and frightened girl with a secret. I thought about them for so, for so many years. I want them to understand. I did this for them. Not for me, because it's not easy by any means. It was for them. will you be talking about tomorrow substance or sub M&M's. Must be under a magic spell. So what do we do? Well, when it comes to breaking spells, usually somebody's got to kiss somebody. That is not going to happen. Ogre-sized M&M's. Get them while they're big. He was her loving husband, but fate took him away. The machines are keeping him alive, dude. He'll give her the greatest gift of all. She needs a heart transplant. She needs one today. Her life. You'll feel me with you. You'll feel my heart. One Life to Live, ABC Daytime. On the next All My Children, I can see straight through you. Behind this nice, sympathetic smile is someone who wants something. 
If I had it my way, you'd never hold my daughter ever again. Let's get some solid proof first. Okay, like what? Like a DNA test. This Sunday, you are not yourself. You are Elio Castroneves. You raced the Indy 500 three times. Won twice, but last year, you lost. Are you thirsty for some Indy milk? The Indianapolis 500, Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on ABC. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Going online. You? Downloading a proposal. Well, I'm researching a project. You'll have to come back later. I don't think so. Guess we've got a problem. We? Relax, cowboys. Every computer in the house has DSL. Verizon Online DSL comes with a wireless home networking router free with rebate, so everyone can go online at the same time for as low as $29.95 a month. You'll also get MSN Premium, which means more features and more protection. Sign up and get your wireless router, but hurry, this is a limited time offer. Call 1-888-673-7375 or order online and put an end to internet showdowns. <laughs> Verizon. Make progress every day. North Central Wisconsin's first choice in the morning. Dating and motherhood don't seem to go together in the same sentence. In my new movie, Raising Helen, I suddenly find myself a mom. It's not what you think. I actually go from aunt to mom. And then I find unexpected romance. And lucky for me, I don't have to choose between the kids... Why'd you lie to your two sons? Who's your target this time? How do you do it, Bianca? How do you get over losing the baby? Meet Jer and Carolyn. They have issues. She's pushy. Next Wednesday, four couples are choosing to split up. I'd just like to know now. To see if they're truly meant to be together. God. He's not going to be happy about this. The Ultimate Love Test. ABC next Wednesday, 10 on Sunday. Come down here one more time. I don't care about anybody else's career. So glad I caught you here. Tell me right. Connect with you. Look, I gotta give you my car. Okay. Call me. We'll do lunch. There's a lot of networking going on out there, and there's some going on right here. But this kind is a little different. With Verizon Online DSL, it's easy to network the computers in your house, so everybody can share the same high-speed connection for one low price. And now it's even easier for everybody to get in on the action anywhere around the house. For a limited time only, we'll give you a wireless router, free with rebate. Plus, you get MSN Premium at no extra cost. Call 1-888-618-9375 or go online now to get Verizon Online DSL for as low as $29.95 a month. Plus, you'll get a wireless router. There's networking. Like, your people and my people can talk, but you know what? That's those people. I'm talking about these people, me and you right here. Then there's networking with Verizon Online DSL. Verizon. Make progress every day. News Line 9 with Melissa Langben. Thank you. Anybody need a little uh, Dutch courage? Asa, this is a hospital, darling. Come it's on, fine. put that away. It's fine, Mom would understand. Yeah, according to her, the pilot's bottle of scotch... Greeks had to cross over to ancient Anatolia, which would now be Turkey. And so I'm sure enough about this that I'm going to say a Turkey final answer. You lose 45,000 if you're wrong, but you win $100,000! Big payday for answering just 10 questions correctly. Okay. Well, you know the next five questions could get you huge, life-changing <laughs> sums of money. Pat. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars here. So take a deep breath, okay. focus your thinking, and prepare yourself. Are you all set? Yes. Because you're entering the next dimension of super millionaire. 